Hey, what's up? This is Tremor, and no, your eyes do not deceive you. This is me playing Roblox. Yeah, it's my Roblox guy. Cat shirt. Right? Um, my kids play Roblox, so therefore I play Roblox. Keep an eye on what they're doing, especially when they might be playing some games with objectionable content, which in Roblox there are actually are quite a few violent games. And, like this one, where you basically eat yourself off the side of a mountain. And as the title implies, try to break a bunch of bones. Now, the whole point here is the more bones you break, the more money you get. I don't know how that works, but you get cash for busting yourself up. In this case, I broke 48 bones, got almost 10 grand. Um, you can do things like a concussion, a hemorrhage, brain damage, all that stuff adds up. The, the more damage you do, the more money you get. Now, why do you want to make money? No. Because you can unlock things for your character and get you know, new and exciting maps to play from, higher heights to jump from. All types of things that in the game progression, uh, if you're going slowly, you may be inclined to buy Robux for real world cash. <clears throat> so, for example, Mount Sibilia got 10 levels, Sunken City has 10 levels, Winter Horrorland has 10 levels. Those are the three main maps. Each unlock costs a little bit more, and as you can see, it progresses up to as much as $150 million. And right now I have $2,700,000. My next unlock is at $3.6 million. I'm averaging about $20,000, maybe $30,000. Every now and then you get $100,000 per jump. Let's see how grindy this could possibly get. You know, let's go to like one of my favorite spots is uh, level 9 on Mount Sequilia. I do some really nice jumps from here. Woo. Take a fly away. Oh, and that sucked. Like, I, I didn't do very well on that one. <coughs> anyway. Um, very grindy, so I got to thinking, well, it's pretty repetitive. And when things are repetitive, as a programmer, you think of automation. Um, if you do the same task over and over again, you can probably code a way to make that happen. So I did, using SchoolyX. And you've seen some other videos of me using SchoolyX, including the one from Clash of Clans that got taken down by a copyright because Supercell's a bunch of pains in the ass. Anyway, uh, they didn't like that I was, quote unquote, botting. They filed the MCA against my uh, my video on YouTube for that one. Uh, anyway, here we go. Short script, basically. Um, I'm gonna run it now. To start off, uh, I am going to orient myself in where I want my character to take off from, and I am gonna run forward and jump. So this is a good spot. What a jump we got here. Not too bad, not too bad. Now I'm gonna go hands free <coughs> and let Sekuliax take over. He's gonna quickly play again. Button. He's gonna run forward and jump. Uh, oh, he kinda slipped. But uh, anyway. It's going all by itself now. I got a concussion out of that one. Not too shabby. Got 23 grand. Just let this run for a while and it'll rack up the dough so I can unlock my next map. So, I don't really condone botting or cheating in games. As a gamer, it's, you know, very frustrating when you have to deal with these types of things. So, this is kind of more of an educational look at um, game development. And how could this be prevented if you were a game developer? Um, well, one thing here is this button. Um, good user design, you wouldn't want to move the button around. Um, so, I mean, you could always click on that button based on its location. 
I'm clicking on that button based on how it looks when it pops up, finds the button. Um, so you could change the font or the, the icon a little bit uh, using animation. Something that might fool an automation using OCR that's just looking for the word play with some skulls next to it. You know. uh, the other one is this spawn endpoint. It's the same every time. Once you're oriented, you can just run forward and jump. And you can just go, go, go. You could have a bigger spawn box with a random spot and a random orientation so that when the character comes back after a spawn, it's looking in a different direction in any type of bot or anything, but at least have to orient itself so it's facing the mountain, the cliff edge. Otherwise, it could just run around all stupid like. You know, and this is me controlling him. There's my bot. He's like running forward and jumping, running forward and jumping. There. Finally found a spot to go. Right? So that would be two ways, pretty quickly, that you could fool a very simple script like the one that I've just written. <coughs> so, that's it. It's uh, just me uh, writing a quick little. It really took me about two minutes to write that in Sakuli. If you're interested in Sakuli, by the way, let's uh, finish dying here. That's a good, I'm just bouncing off of everything. 132. Nice. So we'll end our script. Sakuli X. Learn more about it at SakuliX.com. If you uh, are interested in doing any automation, I primarily use this for testing my own uh, development of web apps and things like that where you need to test clicking and typing and things. You may have seen, like I said, other videos I've done. One I did a, a Discord text-based game that I automated with Sakuli. So you can check that out on my channel. Like and subscribe. And check us out at pwn9.com. Join my Discord if you want to chat gaming, hacking, or anything else. Um, that's it. See ya.